Mate, I'm doing well, but I'll tell you one thing. It's incredibly hot tonight. It is really hot. And man. the boys might be working up a sweat putting this one together. Yeah, so it's, it's muggy. This is very, very tough work in here. Mm. And, but someone's got to do it. And obviously, we've signed up for that gig. So, yeah. I don't know. We'll quit our... Doing um, it for the fans. We're doing it for the fans, yeah, indeed. Pay is terrible. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> Pro bono work. We're, we're probably below market. But hey, <laughs> Stasi, with that said, and speaking of markets... Um, do you want to take us through the good call and bad call or maybe the rise? I would love to. Yeah, I would love to. Good call, bad call is one of my favourite segments because yep. it gives me a chance to actually pick the questions. Yes, well, it's always good. <laughs> You'll take that. Yes. yes. <laughs> first question here or the first good call, bad call that I have yep. is Patrick Mahomes should be the new MVP favourite. Good wants? call, bad call. Who wants this? Oh, it's a toss up, Blaze. I'm sure yeah. we'll have very contrasting opinions. <laughs> Did you want to go or do you want me to go? I'll, I'll get it going. All right, you get it going. I think going. he's certainly making a case at the moment. Um, the, the numbers are stacking up. We're talking four to five touchdowns in the last two weeks. We're talking Each ma- game. Each game. Yeah. We're talking massive, massive numbers in terms of air yards um, with the exception of that game in the snipe in Denver where you didn't have to. Um, I think you're just starting to look at a guy that is proving that all this hot talk about Russell Wilson, everything he was kind of putting together, he's just stopping and starting a little bit. Now, I'm not writing him off, don't get me wrong. Not, mm. not any way, shape, form or how. But I think that resume is starting to build again for a previous winner that probably deserves some more credit than he's getting at the moment. I think the thing is, Blaze, because of how remarkable Mahomes has been for the first two seasons, he's still being remarkable now. And it's almost becoming just like par for the course and yeah. people aren't even... He's setting unreal expectation yeah, upon himself. They're not even like... Registering how amazing what he's doing is, and he's like had like twenty seven touchdowns and one interception through nine games. Speaks to how That's high he's godly. That, so how high he set that bar yeah. on that. So he's had twenty five touchdowns on the year, which is second in the NFL. Correct. He's had one interception, which is the least from starting quarterbacks in the league. Yep. And he's thrown for two thousand six hundred eighty seven yards, which is second, second in the league. Mm-hmm. And he's first in the NFL for offensive yards. Mm-hmm. So he is absolutely flying. Yes. He hasn't really had a bad game, and being on the team, he is their record. He's gonna. You would end up thinking almost be that 15 and 1, 14 and 2 yeah, type, so. yeah. which is going to help him favorably. And then the thing is with uh, Russell Wilson, we said this at the start of the year, the very, very start. The Seahawks go how Russell goes. So yep. when he when they lose, it's on him, yep. which is going to hurt his chances. Correct. And we are starting to see a, a little bit of stop starting out for the Seahawks. I mean, we saw it with the Cardinals um, taking them all the way. There's been a lot of games this year where the Seahawks have needed that last drive or, or overtime to get over the line. And obviously a big loss Happening to the Bills the this week. as well. Yep, correct. So, so that's yeah. a, there's some question marks starting to form there a little bit. And it's, a, it's definitely a watch the space from us. I and know it definitely matters how many games you win. And I think the Chiefs would probably yes, going to win more so. games than the Seahawks are. And all you need to know with that one is it. it the, um, the MVP line on sports bet slid into our DMs this morning from your good self, Ch- uh, Schnazzi, and, um, you know... Please don't ever call me Chuck again. Yeah, and we're all over it, quick smart. So, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to seeing how that one well, unfolds. Mahomes is at about 325 still on sports bet, yep. and that is why I would have them level, him and Russell, I'd yep. have them level at the moment. So yep. that's maybe a bit of value for any sports fans out there who don't mind a bit of a punt. Absolutely. Moving on, my friend. Uh, good call, bear call. The 2020 quarterback draft has already surpassed the 2018 quarterback draft. And for those playing at home, before I hand over to you guys, so the 2018 draft had Mayfield, Darnold, Josh Allen, Rosen, and Lamar Jackson. Yep. Whereas the 2020 draft, we're predominantly talking about Herbert. We're mm-hmm. talking about Tua. And we are also talking about Joe Burrow. Yeah. So I think I've, I'll take this one quickly and then pass to you, Chucky, for more numbers and whatnot. But I think on face value at the moment... You've got the MVP, Lamar Jackson, in that class. And Mm -hmm. you've got Josh Allen, who is having a bit of a breakout year this year now. Um, And obviously three... Well, certainly Baker is a a question mark and then a couple that have really struggled. So, Darnold, obviously, situationally, and Josh Rosen bouncing around team to team. Um, And then you look at this year, and I mean, Herbert and Burrow really establishing themselves as, you know market level kind of quarterback certainly if not a bit mm. above at the moment and Tua has looked really good two wins in his first two games two reasonable mm. scouts too for that matter absolutely um, so I guess at this stage I'm going to find it very hard to go a good call against a team against a draft class that has an MVP in it however I think that case is certainly being built at a rate of knots no I would I would say that the 2021 is better than the 2018 one mm-hmm. based on the fact that from what I've seen from the three quarterbacks from this cl- draft class already Blaze I reckon you've got three uh, foundation quarterbacks like franchise quarterbacks, franchise yeah. quarterbacks that yep. you're going to have for the next 10 years definitely in each of those teams I would have thought barring some sort of horrific injury or something of the like on that nature mm-hmm. whereas what do we got Darnold who already looks like he might not even be in New York next year Baker. we've got Baker who oh, days are numbered if you ask me Rosen. and then Rosen who hasn't even really had a start so yeah. 
Allen's really looking all right, but then Lamar's already starting to drop off a little bit. So, yeah, I would say that so far the 2020 draft class has been better than the 2018 draft Obviously, class. Obviously, it's still early doors a little bit. It's but very think, early doors, but yeah. I think the promise we've seen out of these quarterbacks in the short sample size we do have yeah, is yeah. almost better than what we've seen out of some of those 2018 For candidates. Sure. I think maybe by the end of the year we can make a pretty definitive statement, I would have thought. Yeah, I would have thought yeah. so. Leads into my next good, cool, bad, cool. Yep. And I might chuck over to Slammer for this one first. Of course. Kyle Amari is a better version of Lamar Jackson. Good, well, cool, bad, cool. Well, you could go either way, I reckon, couldn't you? Because like, they're probably very similar in the run aspect of the game. Um, but I'd say probably Baltimore has like shifted their play style to suit mm. Lamar more than Arizona have because they've essentially got one of the worst O-lines getting around. Yep. Um, and then... In terms of pure pocket passer, I think Kyler is definitely ahead of Lamar Jackson for sure. So, uh, not a bad call there from you, Schnapp. I think the key stat with that one before I throw over to you, Blaze, is yep. Kyler Murray is the first quarterback through eight games to have 2,000 passing yards and 500 rush yards. I think the question that's going to come with, and it is coming with Lamar Jackson, has been for a little while now, is obviously the playoff success and then this passing ability that he's got. Now, if you're a one-trick pony, and I'm not saying he is necessarily, but he's had this massive breakout year, and we've seen it before, where guys do something really different and fresh and fun and all the rest of it, and then NFL defenses, as they do, they figure RG3 you out. springs to mind. Correct. So, you know, I'm not saying that Lamar's done or writing him off or anything like that, but I think... They're, those questions seem to me this year anyway starting to become a bit louder and a bit more clear that you know maybe these these holes in his game I don't, I don't know if they should call them holes but there's certainly an area there that I would probably say that Kyle is yeah he's probably in that kind of conversation Baltimore's definitely got a better defense as well that it's supporting mm. him on the offense as well so that probably ties into it as well that's making mm. Lamar look even better than he is as well absolutely good call from you Slammer good call last good call bear call I have mm-hmm the New York Jets will finish at 0 and 16. So off the back of a absolute game mm. they probably shouldn't have lost today against the Patriots. Mm. Their last games to round out of the season against the Chargers, the Dolphins, the Raiders, the Seahawks, the Rams and the Patriots. Personally, I would love for them to finish 0 and 16 because that means I will just get a hoard of um, a little bit more sports bets mythical gold, mm. which would be nice and I was a bit jumpy this afternoon or this morning. Um, when it wasn't looking too flash with old Joe Flacco back at the helm. That's but so uh, I think with that coming home and the Patriots obviously having close one today, but it will be reverse in Boston. I think um, I can't really see it happening. Can you, Slam? Well, I would have said, Blaze, probably the best two chances for the Jets in those remaining games would probably be the Patriots again. Mm. And then, because let's be honest, the Patriots have been on a terrible skid for the last yeah, four yeah. games as well. And who knows what sort of position they'll be in later in the year. And then probably the other one's the Chargers, depending Next on how week. the Chargers go. So. The other thing to consider here is the, the, the draft and whether or not that is a good idea for them to win. Now, I'm not ever saying that the, the players wouldn't try to win, but there is some franchise kind of constraints on maybe what is best for them moving forward. Well, they're only contending consider. with one team now, one win. Correct. So that's Jacksonville. Jacksonville. So the Giants yeah. got their second win. Yep. Um, and who was the other one? The Texans, Texans have got two wins now. So they're not, you know, the two games clear in a sense. Yes. So they'll, they'll be able to take Fields or Lawrence. But yeah, I do agree with you. If it comes down to the back end of the season against that Patriots. It, yeah, it's like, how much do you really want? Like, yeah, it's, zero what's 16 the difference? or Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, exactly. I know what I'd be taking but like, when you're already that bad. Let, like, let's not guarantee that if they get the number one pick that Trevor Lawrence goes there either because it wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. That we ha- like, we've seen quarterbacks before get be touted as in like definitive number one pick and just refused to go and play there. Well, this is true as well. That's obviously... Like Eli Manning did it that's in obviously, San Diego. And then yeah. a long time before that, John Elway did it in Baltimore. It's so. a storyline to follow as we move into the off-season. Oh, if I was Trevor Lawrence, like his, I wouldn't be a going junior to Jets. as well. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't have to come out. He doesn't have to at all. And I think... But even if he does, I wouldn't be surprised if he like, forced them into trading. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not sure that the Jets trading that away wouldn't be the best thing for them anyway because they've got a lot of glaring needs. And probably the quarterback's probably not the biggest one. Yeah. If he had some help around him, he might be a hell of a lot better. You put some help around Donald. We haven't completely written Donald off yet. No, no I haven't. So, He's no, just we got haven't. terrible supporting cast. Not a great offensive line yet. And then the coach is, I think, a problem. It would be an issue, though, if the Jets go down your route. And I'm not saying it's a bad route at all, because I think mm. you're completely right. If you can get a horde of picks or players for that, yeah. that'd be a good way to try and fix that franchise. But if they don't pick Trevor Lawrence and he turns out to be what everyone yeah, thinks, yeah, yeah, then yeah. it'd be but very Jets. So. If that's what everyone thinks he's going to be, imagine the 
the haul they could get. Yeah. Like yeah. We're talking about a ridiculous amount of draft picks in return. Exactly. One thing as well yep. the Jets do have, I'm not sure they're a very attractive free agency spot. No. They've got the second most projected cap space for next season. So that's yep. almost one to watch. As yeah, well. absolutely. But they'll be an interesting team. Something's got to give there. Because it's just, you know, this is mediocrity after mediocrity. So well, the start first thing with the coach. Give is going to give is going to Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Exactly right. Is that all you got for me, big Mate, boy? that's all I have tonight. That's Very all I have. Very good. We'll work through in the heat too, Point my friend. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Let me take it from here. We'll